our Christmas concert. We have uh, it was a mix of singing and spoken word, poetry, prose, some scripture. We have a little bit of secular and a lot of sacred, which I like. So we start with the holly jolly and the bells, and then we will head to Bethlehem. And I, I like to use some poetry and prose to just kind of set the scene for the music that we're about to hear. And we're beginning, so I'm going to open with uh, two pieces. Well, the first is a, is a medley, The Spirit of the Season. Um, it's taken from <coughs> the Boris West. Uh, but it teaches bells, and then we follow that with Carl of the Bells. And so I thought it would be nice to open with a poem about Christmas bells. So Leslie Bathory is going to read from us Christmas bells. <laughs>
follow that with 21 lambs, we have to get the correct in the mass of what we just got from here. And um, to set the, the tone for that one, Angel L. Fox is going to read a little poem entitled Merry Christmas. A Merry Christmas, written by Francis Ridley Caramel. Merry Christmas.
um, they have literally not let me let go of it. It's been one of these that you know, I have been, every year they were not doing this. And I'm completely overridden on it every year because they love it so much. And it is very, very beautiful. Um, it, the words are taken from a poem by Robert Frost. Um, but this year I found an excerpt from a different poem that, that really perfectly sets the scene. For It's a moment in time. There's a lone um, rider passing through and he stops by the woods just for a moment to watch the woods fill up with snow. It's, just, it's a moment in time. You stop. You look, you listen, you take it all in. And this other poem, this is an excerpt for it, really sets the stage very beautifully for um, the piece that we're about to sing. The Winter Scene by William Bliss Carmen, an excerpt. Russet and white and red is the old wood in the great snow. Still, from the north it comes, whispering, settling, sifting through the trees, over low and grass. The road is lost, clear and meadow, stream and ice bound pond are made once more a trackless wilderness. In the white hush, where not a creature stirs, and the pale sun is blotted from the sky, in that strange twilight, the lone traveler halts to listen to the stealthy snowflake. Faithful men and 
women pray. Surely, Lord, the day is near. The desire of all the nation, it is time. He should appear. Then the spirit of the highest, to a virgin meek, came down. And he burdened her with blessing, and he paid her with renown. For she bore the Lord's anointed for his cross and for his crown. Earth has groaned and labored for him since the ages first began. For in him was hid the secret which through all the ages ran. Son of Mary, son of David, son of God, and son of man. Joyful birth, 
transeamos, let us make this journey. So each verse finishes, and then they finally sing all of the words together. Alleluia. Res miranda, caris forma, gaudeamus, transeamus. There is no words.
that Bhakti is going to share with us is a very interesting take on the shepherd. It's, you know, rather than telling the story of the shepherd, because we know the story, it's just a very interesting sermon that I found online because I spent an insane amount of time looking for um, readings and thoughts. In fact, I spent far more time trying to find stuff to read than I do on music. Um, but in my searching, I do find some very interesting pieces, and I thought this was very interesting, and thought this would be a nice place to, to place this in the concert. The Shepherds, excerpts from the people of Christmas. It is interesting that the shepherds were the only ones in the crush who were there because they had been invited. God dispatched an army of angels to go get the shepherds. Many of us think of them as sweet-faced, wholesome country boys, or perhaps we have in mind the image of the noble, solitary shepherd who cares for his sheep as a care for his children. The later image that Jesus would use to describe himself, the good shepherd. But it's likely the men watching the flock on that particular night in that particular location were just not that kind of shepherd. For on the hills outside of Bethlehem, just five miles south of Jerusalem, the shepherd would have had a different kind of duty. There would have been thousands of sheep. At certain times of the year, even tens of thousands of sheep bleeding away. Some of them, the unblemished ones, would end up as sacrifices in the temple. The rest of them would end up in the city market as meat. Bethlehem was the last stop for these sheep. And the men who watched them were not all the protective and possessive shepherd owners, but hirelings, day laborers mostly. These men were part of a social class called the Am Har Arets, or people of the land. They were looked down on by polite society. On the ladder of social status, they were considered just above the slaves. In fact, their reputation was such that they were not even allowed to bear testimony in a court of law. It was assumed that people like that would lie. <clears throat> Theirs was a dirty job in a dusty land. Water was scarce, so they couldn't keep up with the ritual hand washing demanded by the law. Shepherding was considered a thieves' trade that no true Jew would teach his son. Yet, these people, and these alone, receive an invitation to the first Christmas. They experience the terror and the wonder of an angel chorus <coughs> sent to proclaim the great event to them and to tell them where to find his date. This surely attests to the fact that God has a special concern for the poor, the unimportant, the marginalized. Jesus would choose a life of poverty. The Son of Man would have nowhere to lay his head and at his death would own only his robe. In this season, let us remember the shepherds, the forgotten ones, the people of low regard. They were the honored guests of the infant Messiah, who went forth and proclaimed the wonder that they had witnessed. How fitting that God, once again, as he had done with Moses and David, used shepherds to announce the turning point in the spiritual well-being of his people.
Now she's going to read it's a pretty poem. It's just pretty. <laughs> Noelle, written by Anne Porter. When snow is shaken from the balsam trees, and they're cut down and brought into our houses. When clustered sparks of many colored fire appear at night in ordinary windows, we hear and sing the customary carols. They bring us ragged miracles and hay and candles and flowery weeds of poetry that are loved all the more because they are so common. But there are carols that carry phrases of haunting music of the other world, of music, wild and dangerous as a prophet's message, <clears throat> or the fresh truth of children, who though they come to us from our own bodies, are altogether new. With their small limbs and bird-like voices, they look at us with their clear eyes and ask the piercing questions God alone can ask.
Um, it's kind of a sad how because it, it talks about the, the need for the flight into Egypt, the parents to flee, and the need for the Holy Family to, to disappear quickly. And so I thought I would bring the three kings in, because it's very hard to find that this was how about the three kings, that is it, the three kings of Orient, or the Pool of East, or something like that. So I thought we would talk about the kings and then sing about the, um, the flight into Egypt. Um, this is a wonderful poem by Henry Longfellow um, that really, it captures a wonderful image and a picture and a story of these kings and their journey and what happened. <coughs> the Three Kings, written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Three kings came riding from far away, Melchior and Gaspar and Balthazar, three wise men out of the east were they. And they traveled by night, and they slept by day, for their God was a beautiful, wonderful star. The star was so beautiful, large and clear, that all the other stars of the sky became a white mist in the atmosphere. And by this, they knew that the coming was near of the prince, foretold in the prophecy. Three caskets they bore on their saddle bows, three caskets of gold with golden keys. Their robes were of crimson silk with rows of bells and pomegranates and fir bows. Their turbans like blossoming almond trees. And so the three kings rode into the west through the dusk of the night, over hill and dell, and sometimes they nodded with beard on breast, and sometimes they talked as they paused to rest with the people they met at some wayside way. Of the child that is born, said Balthazar, good people, I pray you, tell us the news, for we in the east have seen his star, and have ridden fast, and have ridden far, to find and worship the king of the Jews. And the people answered, You ask in vain. We know of no king but Herod the Great. They thought the wise men were men insane as they spurred their horses across the plain like riders in haste who cannot wait. And when they came to Jerusalem, Herod the Great, who had heard the story, <coughs> sent for the wise men, and questioned them, and said, Go down unto Bethlehem, and bring me the tidings of this new king. So they rode away, and the star stood still, the only one in the gray of morn. Yes, it stopped. It stood still of its own free will, right over Bethlehem on the hill, the city of David where Christ was born. And the three kings rode through the gate and the guard, through the silent street, till their horses turned and neighed as they entered the great inn But the windows were closed, and the doors were barred, and only a light in the stable burned. And cradled there in the scented hay, in the air made sweet by the breath of pine, the little child in the manger lay, the child that would be king one day, of a kingdom not human, but divine. His mother, Mary of Nazareth, sat watching beside his place of rest, watching the even flow of his breath for the joy of life and the terror of death were mingled together in her breast. They laid their offerings at his feet. The gold was their tribute to a king. The frankincense, with its odor sweet, was for the priest, the paraclete. Myrrh, for the body's buried. And the mother wondered and bowed her head and sat as still as a statue of stone. Her heart was troubled, yet comforted, remembering what the angel had said of an endless rain 
and of David's throne. <coughs> then the kings rode out of the city gate with a clatter of hooves in cloud array. But they went not back to Herod the Great, for they knew his malice and feared his hate, and returned to their homes by another way. from the reports coming each day from the media, sweeping from 
one hemisphere to the other of the globe. May the joy of Christmas, which sings of the birth of the Savior, instill in all trust in the power of truth and of patient perseverance in doing good. For each of us, the divine message of Bethlehem resounds. Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. It has become a must do for the poorest we. The first year I attempted it, we, we crashed and burned, we just couldn't do it. And then the following year, somehow we put it together. And after that, it's been with us, and I think will be until the end of time. Uh, it's a wonderful piece of music by Benjamin Britten, and it uses um, battle imagery to describe the helplessness of the babe, but it, it is a battle cry to the powers of hell with this tiny infant child will make all of hell tremble. The first verse they sing in unison. The second they follow one after the other at a beat distance. And then the third verse, they're following one after the other after the other at a beat distance. So if it sounds all wrong, it's not. <laughs> in fact, when you get used to it, it's lovely because it's a cascade. It's a cascade. At that point, it's just the sound of the music. It's not the text. The text is lost in the sound of one part following the other. And it's a very exciting piece. It really is the only way to finish a Christmas concert. And it's their favorite. So let us sing this with me. Your 
light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. Let the work of Christmas begin, and let it begin with you. Our first trimester's walk. It's lovely to have.